Back in the 90s, game music was a little different. Instead of instruments, musicians made their music inside the game console, creating those familiar bleeps and bloops. This art lingers on, and today I'm at the Campbelltown Arts Centre to learn how to write and perform my own retro jams with the help of professional jammer, Dot AY. Can you explain a little bit about what's happening here today? So it's basically a festival based around video game consoles and creating music and visuals out of things that we used to use in the past just for playing games. It's kind of taking that and making something entirely new that they were never kind of originally intended for. The great thing about all of these older consoles is they all had a sound chip that effectively had its own characteristics, whereas nowadays everything uses samples and recordings. All of those were individual kind of sonic characteristics that everyone is kind of familiar with as you just think about the Mario theme song. It's very bleepy bloopy. Everyone knows those kind of sounds. They sound like that because of these sound chips. So effectively, a, a chip tune is music that's, that's coming from those sound chips. So how did you get into the whole world of chip tunes? I came at it from an interesting angle in that I wasn't necessarily a gamer first, but I was really into music and sound. I've actually been more interested in video games since getting into this because of the, the history and everything is, is so like rich and amazing. But for me, it was the breadth of sound that you can get out of such a kind of simple device. It's one of the one things that sounds quintessentially electronic. Like there's nothing as electronic sounding as a kind of video game console. I'll switch across. So I'm looking at the same thing that you guys are. So what kind of chips are we using today and like what can people do with those? Okay, so generally the, the most popular is the Nintendo Game Boy and its sound chip is only four channels and it is kind of raw and, and crunchy, but the great thing is that it's portable. That's why it's kind of become a musical thing that anyone can use and it's still relevant now because you can make these great music portably <laughs> and kind of carry it around with you. With that in mind, we headed into the classroom to start learning to code on a Game Boy in the hopes of building our own tracks. Oh, thank you. So if you have a Game Boy in front of you and turn it on, you should see something similar to that. This is pretty intense. C1, and so that's for each individual instrument. Yeah. All right, so it's a lot to take in. Phrases make up chains, chains make up a song. Um, first thing I have to do is build my drum beat. So drop some sick beats. minutes, I had something I thought was pretty funky. Well, you're listening to it, so you be the judge. However, surrounded by some more experienced artists, I was a little nervous about showing off my own tune to the class. Now I have... His was better, though. <laughs> but sometimes you just gotta go for it. Well, that was my first performance as a chiptune artist, and it was nerve-wracking um, showing off my piece, but I think I, you know, I had a little something there. The tool is really interesting. It's quite simple in that there's only four tracks, but there's a lot of depth to it, and there's heaps you can do, and it's really easy to mess things up. I had to ask for help a couple of times, but people are doing amazing things with this tool, and I'm a musician myself, but I don't know how to play this instrument. It's very different. It's a really interesting way to make music, and it's really cool to see gaming and music, two things that I love come together like this, so I'm going to keep working on my piece. <laughs> <laughs> 